was, so the exercise was to break you up into teams and literally take 10 minutes to design a pit code. Now, if you can actually design a pit code in 10 minutes, you guys are beyond stars. <laughs> because, you know, I, I spend days with clients trying to figure this out. But we're, what, I, what I want you to do is I'm going to ask uh, you guys to send a representative up. And that representative, I will, you know, query on the four points, okay? So the four points are, how is your token being sold? Okay, under what premise? And I think I'll give you that one right away. Two, what is your use case? What is your market case? And then how are we going to affect capital liquidity? And we've got about 10 minutes at the end, really, to focus on, on the fourth item. But uh, what's your team name? Do you have a team name? Uh, block Insurance. Okay, come on up, Block Insurance. Big hand for Block Insurance. So let's start with how is your, t your token is a security? Our token is a security token. Okay, so it's not a utility, it is yeah. actually a security. Okay. So it's what? Particularly okay, well that's, that's super. So how, what's your, what's your market case? What's uh -huh. your use case? I'm sorry, your use case. Our use case is to create a tokenized insurance company. Okay. Whereby participants and people who buy insurance, mm -hmm. um, sorry, let me rephrase that. Uh, an insurance company distributes its risk to tokens. Right. And people buying a security token are basically buying into the risk reward of an insurance. So company. something like Lloyd's of London was originally. That's pretty right. Much, right. Right under the T-shirt. Okay. So I got the T. Went there, got the T-shirt. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so okay. So the use case is it's an insurance company with dis with decentralized or distributed risk. Correct. Right. right. And everybody who takes a piece of the risk gets a piece of the reward. Correct. Okay. So at the end of the claims period, after after claims have been paid for and commissions have been right. paid for. The rest of it's distributed back to the token holders. So that, I mean, I, does everybody, that's a pretty brilliant idea. I mean, that's Lloyd's of London. That's what Lloyd's of London did, right? They all met in the pub and they decided, you know, let's distribute the risk. But you can do it now using blockchain technology, right? On a decentralized basis, someone in Australia can own a piece of this insurance fund, right? For effectively, and how how would you market that? Uh, to an ICO. Okay, through an ICO. Yeah, yeah through an ICO. Yeah. And and your market case would be. Literally to affect, you know, for everybody has a piece of an insurance company, That's right? right? You're an insurer now. Not You're an insurer. And, and how, do you think there would be regulation? Forget, forget the regulations deal with the security, yeah. right? But what would be, because part of the issue here is getting all the regulators to understand this. But in a distributed model, you could do this, I would suggest you would do this in a jurisdiction. You did it in Gibraltar. Right, somewhere like Gibraltar or... Mm -hmm. What is a lot of insurance companies based anyway? Well, absolutely, and reinsurance or Bermuda. We were actually with the, the country of Bermuda last week. They're, they're gonna, you're going to see some fantastic stuff coming out of them. Right. So you're the same as a reinsurer would. You'd find yeah, them, right, in that jurisdiction. So does that, does that make sense to everyone? Is that a great example? Mm -hmm. Okay. So Team Block Insurance, all right. <laughs> Civil litigation, and then you get paid on the settlements from. Uh, so, so almost like a like being a lawyer for a contingency fee. Yes. Yes. Right? You you fund the yes. case and then bring it to a lawyer. Um. Well, yes. The lawyer would still litigate the case, and they would be paid out. But 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 you would be the ones funding it, so they would sort of only get their. They get a share. They yeah. get a, but a smaller share. Yeah. So so if I get it, if I if team litigate gets it, so it's a. It's a token that pays some kind of return on investment, similar to block, you know, block insurance, right? And then you're decentralizing, again, the risk right. by sharing it with a lot of other people. So I might put my $100 or $1,000 in, and I might get from the cases that, that are won, I may get a return of 10 or 15 or 20% a year based on that, right? Yeah, based on how. how okay, and, and how would you market that? Become rich like a lawyer. Okay. 
<laughs> Not all lawyers are rich, but and, and do you think it would be regulatory in penis, or you just? Yeah, I think it'd be a really big deal because I mean, right now, no one else can own a piece of a law practice, right? And so this would be this would be kind of strange in that you were getting pieces of cases and then sort of bringing them to a law practice. It would be, it'd be a strange setup. Yeah, well, I think, so. uh, well, I think you, you'd probably set up, and again, not to, to think that this is correct, but you'd set up this fund in which lawyers can come into the fund and actually borrow against the yes. fund, yeah. right? Okay. And then, and we talked about like factoring, sort of, I and mean, you're kind of factoring the deal. So, so at the end of the day, um, you're getting a percentage of the settlement because the, the it would be the defendant, I think it is, the, the person who's bringing the suit against, then would be, or the plaintiff, the plaintiff, the plaintiff would be bringing the suit. They wouldn't be paying anything. Um, the lawyer would be getting paid by the fund, and then the fund would have a return on investment, which it would distribute. Okay, so in both cases, how do you distribute the money that they win, right? So now you got people who have tokens. Do you know who the token holders are? No, you don't know who the token holders are. It's all so. What you probably do is convert the token, the the dividends back into Ether or Bitcoin and then send it to the addressable wallet. Right, so that's how you pay your dividend. Does that make sense to everyone? Yes? I think it would work being a lawyer and a litigator. Yeah. What would... We're all leaving now. Yeah, <laughs> there would be too many lawyers in the room, right? Anyway, if you had a case, case goes into the into yeah. city recovery. The case then is explained, vetted, and put up there. Right. And say, here's what you, here are the facts. Yeah. Here's our side. Here's their side. Here, here's the probability you're going to win. A risk, some risk mitigation. But it's on its own. Right. And it would be listed like others. Yeah. On the on on the website, and you people could go into each one and say, I like that one. Okay, I think I'll put some money into that. Well, that so that individual case will have its own payoff. Yeah. It, it, it's sort of like a sort of like a limited partnership. In some no, well, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm just saying they, they would have limited risk, but the reward from, from that. The reward, Sorry. ultimately, you're, you're, you're taking a look at it, you're going to raise 50000 so, so then you're going to make 200000 on the settlement. Right, but the challenge, and, and just a challenge, not necessarily an issue, but you'd have to issue a separate token for each case, yeah. where if you did it through a pool, you'd only have to issue a token once. Plus, plus the money that was won, part of it could go back into the pool to increase size of the pool, so you never have to increase the token distribution. So there are things to play with, but in theory, you're right, you could do it, especially on a massive case, right? On a massive case, you could do on your own, but you could do pooled events, because the pooled events might might be smaller. But but there, there are different, it's, you it's in voting, you could do voting on the individual right. cases, right. The, the, based on that, the, the fund itself would take X number of cases or something. Yeah, it, you bring up a good point, you want people to be able to pick. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, because some yeah. cases are less stronger than others. Well, absolutely, and and you know, insurance. I know somebody who does, you know, uh, insurance adjustment for large cases, and that's always there's always risk. Thank you, Team Litigate. Just check into the laws for our champerty and maintenance. The lawyers are allowed to participate, but yeah. the rest of us commoners are not allowed under under old English law, and that's changing. But well, again, this might be a Gibraltar fund, right? I, yeah. Okay, so. So now, last team, biggest team, expecting the most from this team. <laughs> What's your team called? Real time. Real time? Real time. Oh, team real time. Let's get real time. <laughs> so let's start. Is, what kind of token is it? Is it a security token? Is it, but it was a utility token. We modified it. It's we modified, you pivoted. Okay, a utility token can be sold under security law, right? So I know, I know it's confusing, okay? So there are different types of token, right? Think of different types, you know, Baskin Robbins, different flavors of ice cream. But Baskin Robbins sells all those ice cream out of one store, right? So the process in which you're selling it could be under a security exemption or some relief, okay? Because then you're following the laws and how you're selling it. What it is might be something different. So right now it is a security token. It's sort of a unit, actually. Okay. We're gonna do Sell a whole bunch of tokens, raise a bunch of money. Yeah. Then we're gonna buy a bunch of real estate. Yeah. So and so let's start. So it's a security token. Does it what's the return on investment? How's the return on investment made? Well, two ways. So you're going to be buying a pool of real estate assets and throwing them into basically a timeshare co-op. Okay, and some does some of that money come back to the individual 
folder every year, and you can you get your little token, and you can take uh, time in the timeshare, or you can put it in the auction. You can okay. raise money that way. Okay, so so let's start there. So you, I've got a token. I get the token at the beginning, so I'm a token holder. So the 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 pool of assets that's use cases to to pool real estate assets mm -hmm. and timeshare type assets. Timeshare type so assets. or an Airbnb type asset. Either right? way, you buy yeah, okay. real estate assets that real estate you assets. Stay in it or you can the, put Okay, so there's a residential it. play, not a commercial play. Mm -hmm. And then I can either take my quote unquote dividend mm -hmm. and I can use it against, you know, a, a probably a below market price to use the property. Mm -hmm. And or I can because you don't want to you, you only can reserve a certain amount of that time, otherwise you're not, you're not maintaining it. And then or I can elect to take my dividend. Or you, yeah, yeah, you can spend it, or you can spend your time on the assets back to the pool, or you can and spend someone it else can buy it. I could swap. You could swap. You know, I could swap time. You know, yeah. Mary wants time go away, and she's a token holder, and she'll buy my time for three hundred dollars. Yep. Okay, great. So that's the that's the use case, and now you've pretty much covered the market case, right? Everybody wants real estate. Right. Everybody wants real estate. <laughs> you know, they they are doing crowdfunding now, where you can own a portion and under, under an equity crowdfunding uh, basis in the United States. Where you can actually own part of a hotel. So under the Jobs Act, they allow for certain crowdfunding. But and and do you see any downsides, any risks? What is any risk? Well, it seems perfect for money laundering to get into the <laughs> <laughs> Well, here's here's that's an interesting. So when someone buys a token, so when someone buys a token, legitimate tokens do two process or two processes. One is a KYC, so it's a know your customer which is a traditional approach that all the banks take and all the brokerage firms take. And then they do something called an AML, it's an anti-money laundering. Now, what's really cool that most of you may not know that a token comes with all the meta metadata for the history of the token. So if it has been under nefarious guise at one point in time, you're going to know that. In fact, it was with the brokerage firm last week, said our clients only, our clients only want clean tokens. So as dividends, they only want bought tokens. They want or originated tokens because they don't want dirty tokens. They don't want tokens that have been in the gambling industry. They don't want tokens that have a history in the uh, adult uh, entertainment industry, shall we say? So there are lots of things, but but a token has its history. And if you if you have a token that has fractional shares, you're going to get in, you're going to get information on all that history. So what's really interesting is is the way that money goes into a token is all it may be a bit challenging, but once the token is there it's much harder to do any nefarious activities. Well, thank you, team, uh, real time. So, has anybody got any questions on any of the ideas? Because now we're going to move into the last piece. One real quick. Yeah. Give up a legal test for security and utility. If you are absolutely for sure utility and never going to be anything else, yeah. all of this regulatory nonsense that's going on, why wouldn't you just stay? In the utility, get don't have to go through the listing, don't have to go through the regulators. You explained you, you, you were talking about taxes and other issues that mm -hmm. might be a disincentive. Maybe that's big enough reason. Yeah. Maybe you I think the tax is a big enough issue. Um, if you are a utility token, you are going to pay tax. Period. End of discussion. How does it work? In well, Canada. Well, Canada, the United States, Great Britain, Hong Kong, Australia. Maybe not. Maybe not. If you do a deal out of uh, Gibraltar, you won't. But as soon as you start, so. What you've got to do... But isn't that a problem? Like, isn't it incumbent upon us to um, uh, adapt? I, I'd rather the use companies start in Canada and, uh, and not in Gibraltar. I agree. Um, and, uh, you know, if there's a um, uh, borderless uh, blockchains... Um, but we're not talking about a blockchain. We're not talking about the blockchain. We're talking about the sale of a token. Okay. No, but those are the same thing. No, they're not. You're purchasing something. Okay, if you're purchasing something, there's a, there, there's an issue with the purchase of, a, of an item, and you have to live within the. Well, I understand that's orthogonal to the blockchain in the sense that it happens outside of it. If I buy or sell Bitcoin from you in a peer-to-peer -peer relationship, the, uh, the 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 uh, the transfer is is recorded on the blockchain, but our relationship is not on the blockchain. You, you, so you need to read the U.S. the IRS recent memo, 21 something or other. But the point is, I don't if I choose to uh, start my if, company somewhere else or if I'm resident somewhere else. I, I'm I'm not disagreeing with you. Right. Okay. The laws that exist today, the IRS tax code that was just published, or the memo that was just published, 
if you, if you earn money mining Bitcoin, okay, or any other coin, that's a taxable event. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to with you, but, 100%. but so I'm not, I'm not arguing that point, I'm not going to get into the, the sure. debate, because that's not, you just the come in, want to I understand, I do understand, but you just, tax come, guys you just come taxes. in, we're trying to finish off something, sure. that was great. Okay, so the tax issue is, and, and every county firm has recognized the tax issue. But it's under sales tax, income tax, capital gains tax, what is it? Right now, right now, it depends on, on the transfer. So if you're selling a token, it's it's probably an income tax base. It's a, and there might be a VAT tax too. But right now, what companies are looking to do that are doing utility tokens, they're trying, currently there's different uh, methodologies and setting them up in another jurisdiction that does dissuade the tax. But again, if you sell it as, is it, if you sell it as a security, you're never going to run into a problem like Tezos did where somebody said now you're selling an unregulated security for any other reason and now there's, now there's a lawsuit. I'm just suggesting we, at our firm, we suggest you treat it as a security in the sale process to avoid that and to meet the regulatory requirements. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not going, I'll come back and just say, I'm not going to say that those aren't going to change and they shouldn't change. But we have to deal with what is, not what could be yet. And then we all have to have a voice to try and change what is to what could be. Okay, so, so can we talk a little bit about uh, selling it as a security? You know, what does that process look like? Uh, uh, so, so you know, presumably we don't want to go down the path of filing a prospectus. You don't have to file a prospectus. Uh, then, so, you know, what exemption would it be? An OM using it? it, it, it that's really what between you and your council at the end of the day. But I know that a lot of people are applying in Ontario to use the uh, offering memorandum if they want to have both accredited and non-accredited investors, but in an there's an exemption already for accredited investors. Yeah, there's an exemption. inhibiting who buys the token. Yes. Yeah. So what happens is with most companies, if they want to do anything in, in, in globally, they start, with, especially Canadian U.S. companies, the, a lot of them will now start to start in Canada and the U.S., sell a limited number of tokens in the, those jurisdictions, meaning those regulations, and then potentially go to a jurisdiction that meets that meets the requirements in Europe. And, the, and, and there was a great article that came out on uh, Cointelegraph, and I suggest everybody go look there. It was a recent article that just came out that actually lists all the regulatory requirements for, um, for each one of the major jurisdictions. And there's a lot of new ones coming up. But suffice it to say, Europe is still very open. So a lot of companies are going into Europe because there is a, quite a bit of democratization still in play. The regulators are still saying it's a case-by-case -case basis, and and, but, but if you want to be safe, you can do it in Canada the U.S. under the current guise, uh, Australia, Hong Kong, you can do it the same way, and then use other areas to get your, your larger base. Does that make sense? So, so then, you have, then it becomes a liquidity issue, right? Because you want to trade the token. Now, there are restrictions with security tokens. There's not many exchanges that actually allow security tokens to be traded. And there is a lot of um, discussion and a lot of uh, conjecture right now that there will be. Has anyone heard of T0? Yes. yes. Yeah, okay, so at Money 2020, which was in Las Vegas about five or six weeks ago, I believe, it was the talk of the town. And Patrick Byrne thinks they're gonna raise about half a billion dollars on that deal to take it into life. So that, that's expected to be one of the first tokenized uh, exchanges. But in Japan, there's been 11 regulated exchanges. So you're gonna see a lot more of that happen. Um, so now I'm going to ask if there are any questions because I'm going to keep this really light. Are there any other questions? We've got time for about three questions. We've got time for three questions. Come on, someone ask three questions. No. Nope. <laughs> so I have an investment broker. Yeah. I've got 6% of retail deposits in my number or whatever. It's like $50 billion. Yeah. If these guys file an OM and it's a security, can I sell this to people? You're asking. You're you're asking. Are you asking my opinion? Because I can't yeah. give you my. Because I asked lawyers, and lawyers tell you to talk to other lawyers. And yeah. Really well, uh, we actually brought to the street last week a uh, a token that we think will fit inside an account. Okay. That that's the real big issue, right? Because it's again, it's it's kind of fitting, not necessarily a round peg in a square hole, but it's not necessarily a square peg in a square hole. The, again, it's the other side of the mountain, right? Everything is done on this side of the mountain and it all works, but now you gotta get into the real world. And compliance is slow, <coughs> right? And that's it's your your risk may have been mitigated by an OM because you can sell any other OM, but how do you manage the tokens if they're in a client's wallet? 
So it, 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 there's still, still some things, as I said to someone earlier, you know, in 1995, you know, the internet sort of came out, it was still 1997, 98, even 99 before the brokers had email, right? Because, and if anybody knows any young investment advisors, um, really young investment advisors, ask them how long it's been since they could use social media to reach out to their clients, right? They weren't using a phone, they were only using social media. So there's been, the changes happen slowly, but everybody has been um, literally bowled over by the way that the ICO, or we like to call it the PIPCO market, works. So that the regulators and everyone else are trying to grasp this as quickly as possible. Because once it's a regulated offering, or it's a secure, securitized offering, the opportunity is that the investment community can play in it, where to date they haven't been able to play it. That's a big difference too. If you're offering a utility token or you're offering a non-compliant regulatory offering, none of the broker dealers, none of the investment advisors, nobody can touch this. But the more that we do that, the more they can touch it. What are you going to do about how do you feel about the fact that even if you do have a regulatory compliant, the compliance officers within the various brokerage firms won't allow it? Yeah. Well, that's what we were just saying. The, the thing is, it's going to be a crawl, walk, run process. You're going to get somebody, how it works on the, on the street is very simple. Somebody says yes, and everybody else figures out how to say yes. No? no? Okay, I, I was there in the internet days. No I'm one wanted internet sites. I'm there today. Yeah. Now, today, it's, it's a nowhere, but again, no, I'm just, what I'm saying is it's working just the other way. Mm -hmm. What's happening is various brokerage firms compliance offices are now saying no to more and more things. I um, agree with you, but, but the, okay, I agree with that general statement, but what we're seeing is movement on the street because the ICO market is leaving them behind. Yes. Right? So what drives the brokerage industry is how much money can be made on a deal. So I was just talking to the people today from Raymond James telling them one of the things we've just designed and they said and they said we don't touch token offerings at the beginning mm -hmm. and by the end they said we'd like to have a talk with you. Yeah, except Raymond James has now restricted access to basically private placements yeah. in any of the venture firms, any marijuana companies, and anything that has an exposure to marijuana. Exactly, companies. because they're US owned. No, no, no. It's just their compliance officer has just taken it three steps too far. Uh, so the US compliance officer has just shut it all down. So Raymond James can't even do any of that right now. Okay, um, but again, I agree with what you're saying, Tim, as this gentleman, that time time heals all wounds. It will take time. <laughs> you know, it's going to take time. Sure. It's not going to happen overnight, but, but I think if we have this discussion in two or three years from now, it would have changed. And part of it is changing because the regulators are changing. The, the point of my question is, how are you bringing efforts to bear on the regulators to induce those changes rather than having them respond aggressively. They're not. Sense. They're not. You, you, uh, are you here? I'm in Vancouver, Toronto, New York. Okay, so Toronto. Have you have you dealt with anything on the launch pad? Uh, I haven't dealt with anything on the launch pad, but I have dealt with the regulators uh, dealing with ICOs and with Bitcoin. Okay, so so the launch pad was set up to be able to deal with that. They're responding very quickly. Uh, are you talking about sandbox? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I've got the information I've got back and the comments I've got back in the sandbox and don't do it. Okay, well, I'm, I'm hearing quite the opposite, so we're at different sides of the fence here. Okay, and if uh, Alan Winch is here from Token Funder, mm -hmm. uh, I would talk to him as well today. Okay. Okay, that would be a good time. Are you going to at the end of this? Uh, I don't know where he is. I haven't seen him, but he's supposed to be in doing... If you look at your schedule... He's meeting next week. There, go, go see us and see him afterwards. They're doing something similar to we, what we do, but they've actually been one of the first ICOs actually approved by. Don't, don't get me wrong, my, my approach is the regulators are wrong. Uh, I have attack, I run market news publishing and we deal yeah. with regulators on an ongoing basis. And the regulators have been the short end of the stick and the long end of the stick for many, many years. And you know, it's, I, I'm not, again, disagreeing with you. And, but I do see, which I have not seen in many years, I'm seeing a lot of movement. When, when the TSXV, when uh, Brady today said, that they are looking at this particular issue, I was shocked. Okay, shocked. Dave, no, uh, but I, but <laughs> I, you and I can have that debate separately. Okay, yeah. so I'm, and again, I'm, you know, publicly, I'm, I, I am very pro to the cause, but there's going to take time to get this. And, and we've got time for one more question. Yeah, we should wrap it. We're yeah. actually ready. We're okay, we're, now we're so, so, I can ask you separately. Thank you yeah. so much. Speaking of David afterwards, thank, uh, thanks. Oh. Thank you.